All right, another card to the ministry here. Um, this is a, just a lot of personal stuff in here, but then there's a, some questions here. Um, three questions. How can someone tell if their salvation is just in their head or real? Question number two, is it possible to feel bad about sinning but not be saved? Number three, is it possible to believe that you're saved but aren't? <laughs> um, uh, how can someone tell if their salvation is just in their head or real? Uh, well, the Lord will uh, make things happen in your life when you are saved. Your life is not your own. You're bought with a price. And so when the Lord purchases you, he will put you into situations. And what will happen is, the greatest way for you to understand if you're saved or not is if this book becomes real to you. Um, God will, let me go to the one scripture here. The Lord will reveal things to you from this book. And that's why you can't really talk a Bible-believing Christian out of their faith in this King James Bible. It just doesn't work. Um, you know, the, people come out and they'll say, well, the King James Bible has errors in it, and you're just kind of going... Yeah, no, it doesn't. I don't think so. You're not going to convince me because I've experienced this book. Um, I'm trying to think here. Okay, John chapter 14. I was back too far towards the front of the book of John. John chapter 14. Here's a very important one. Um... John chapter 14, verse 22. Judas saith unto him, not Iscariot, the other Judas in other words, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. If you go to chapter 15, verse 7, If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. So, the seal of true salvation is, does this book become alive to you? God will reveal things through this book. And all of a sudden you'll be reading this and you'll say, I can't believe this is exactly what I'm going through right now. Wow. You know, and I've heard it so many times people will be reading a, a portion of scripture and they say, Lord, I don't know what that means. And they're meditating in, upon it on their, in, in their mind and they're thinking, they're going to work or they're going to the store or going to wherever. And this verse is just there, just going around in their mind and they're thinking, I don't know, I don't know how to interpret that. I, I'm confused about this. And they'll come on to my channel and I have a sermon explaining that very verse. Or they'll go and they'll do a search on YouTube or some kind of a search because it's eating away at them. There's the video right there. It explains, oh, okay, it explains it. And you'll, then you realize, wow, I have fellowship with the Spirit and fellowship with the brethren. That's how you will tell. That's the big way that it happens. The Lord will manifest himself through his word, his written word. And that's why people can't take it away from you if you're a real Bible believer. If you're lost, you, know, you might be King James only for a little while, and then you quit and you go to some new version somewhere. Number two, is it possible to feel bad about sinning but not be saved? Absolutely. There are some very moral, decent Catholics out there absolutely then they'll feel bad about their sins and and things and they really truly have a conscience they don't all just completely kill their conscience and rape children and you know do wicked things like that and work in the mafia you know it's, a lot of the mafia guys were catholics richard kuklinski and you know the ice man um roman catholic baptized catholic uh, al capone baptized roman catholic a lot of those guys um but you know that's the far end of the spectrum of what a catholic can be but you know you'll find catholics that are decent moral people and they will feel bad about sinning. Um, so, and, but they're not saved. They're not born again. See, so um, you, every man has a conscience. And God has revealed things to people. And the law is written in their hearts. So they'll feel bad if they steal. They'll feel bad if they dishonor their parents. They'll feel bad if they lie, you know, bear false witness. They'll feel bad about things like that. It doesn't mean that they're saved. Number three, is it possible to believe that you're saved but aren't? Um, absolutely. I'll show you 
the great verse on that. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. Uh, do you realize how many people believe in vain? You hear it from atheists all the time. I was raised going to church. I was, you know, raised in Sunday school, and I believed in Jesus and everything else. I believed the Bible. I believed what my pastor taught me. And then I went to university, and now I'm an atheist, and I hate God and hate the Bible and everything else. I was a faithful churchgoer for all these years, and I believed in Jesus. And then, you know, yes, you can believe in vain. It happens millions, hundreds of millions of times, probably billions of times. Um, it happens all the time. So, yes, uh, in answer to that question. So, um, three good questions there. And uh, hopefully I've answered them well for you. And uh, have some other letters here and things I need to go through. Um, this is all stuff here. Uh, another pile of letters and mail that I've gotten in and there's uh, that's what was on my desk there and and now there's uh, these all came in uh, yesterday more so um, the problem is my desk uh, <laughs> Is, uh, I remember there was something about Albert Einstein, you know, that said that um, a cluttered, they say a cluttered desk is a, the mark of a cluttered mind. And he said, well, then what does an empty desk, you know, refer to <laughs> an empty mind? Uh, but I certainly qualify for a cluttered desk thing. As hard as I try, and it'll go for a little while. It's cleaned up right now. I'm not going to take the camera and show, but, um, you know, I get, I'll be in here doing video editing or whatever else you know researching i do a lot of research I, st I study a lot i watch a lot of videos about economics about end time type of stuff and whatever else and different channels that are keep people updated on what's going on in the economy what's going on with war what's going on with you know political stuff whatever else but why well because i'm watching um, i want to be found faithful when the lord comes back and i need to know things to protect my family and to protect my viewers as well as much as i can and so I'm, I'll be doing something at my computer and my wife will come in and she'll say, you know, here's the, the letters. And I went through them and, um, you know, the here you go. And I get this, you know, big stack of letters and I'm going, OK, and I stick them on my desk. And then some other papers come in. Could you please check this out? Could you please do this? You know, could you fill out this? Could you fill out that? Here's a letter we got about, you know, some political thing or whatever else here's some you know spam advertisement stuff from charismatics you know asking for my money and i you know okay i might do a video on that or something and i get this huge stack of letters on my on my desk and then you know half the time i don't get back to people you know here's a letter right here i won't show the address or anything but they said it's a self-addressed stamped envelope you know could you please let us know that we got the donation and i i'm looking through it and i see it and i think oh you know, the 2nd of October, 2023. Ugh, you know, I can't just drop everything I'm doing. Oh, letters, let me answer everything and stop my video work or whatever else. So, <laughs> I try, but um, please be patient with me. I'll try to get back to you. Um, and again, I get stuff online sent to me, emails and whatever else. Could you please answer this? Could you do a study on that? I haven't heard anybody preach on this. I haven't heard anybody preach on whatever. So I thank the Lord for the ministry, but, you know, it sure has given me a lot of gray hair over the years. You know, you can go back to my early stuff and see, I didn't have gray hair in my beard, but I do now, you know, and, and uh, I have lots of gray hair up here on my head too, you know. Um, so, <laughs> but, you know, would I do anything else? No, I would not. Um, I mean, I... If Lord puts me back into wood turning someday or, you know, doing, selling firewood or something or whatever, rustic furniture making like I used to do, okay, fine, you know, I'll do that. But I sure would miss the ministry. 
uh, as hard as it is, as much struggle as it is, and the, and the nightmares and the spiritual attacks and all the other, other stuff, my name being cast out as evil, but, you know, evil report, um, I still enjoy it. I do. Um, the rush of being able to um, know when the Lord is speaking to you and when the Lord opens up a door of utterance when you're out in public and, and you get in a conversation and you're sharing things about the Lord and, you know, talking about the Bible, quoting scripture, and you see people walking by and they're going, <laughs> whoa, what's this all about? Um, that's wonderful. I live for that. And um, so thank you to everybody out there for your letters. Thank you for your support of the ministry. Uh, please do not get offended if I don't answer you back. Um, I am literally buried under letters. And how do I, how do I hire this out or either get somebody else to help or something like that. Um, the best thing that you can do if you want to encourage me is send me a letter or whatever and just simply say, brother, I appreciate your videos. If you could eventually get around to doing something on this subject, that would be great. Um, and I've, there have been times I've had people send me, could you do a sermon on such and such? And I think I already did one, you know, seven years ago, nine years ago, whatever else. And I think, you know, and I'll just kind of pray and just word. You know, help them to find that. Uh, if you have a question about anything, um, did Brother Brian do a video on whatever else? You can go to the, I guess my channel, and there's a search thing there, and you can type in the subject, or type in different keywords from a scripture that you have a question about, and a lot of times it'll come up. And um, ask a question in the comment section of a video. And just say, do you have a study on this? And usually somebody that's been around the ministry, some of the people that help the ministry out, the brothers and sisters that helped me, they might say, yeah, he did a video on that, and here's the link to it, or whatever, or it's called this. Because if they put a link to it, sometimes it gets listed as spam, and it gets put into a folder, and I don't even know what's going on. So, and again, if you're having comments deleted, that's the algorithms that do that. Um, I don't delete very many comments unless there's profanity or links to other heretical stuff or somebody's just being a troll and being a pain. I'll get rid of them. But other than that, I don't delete comments. So, <sighs> all right, <laughs> that's going to be it for now, and we will see everybody in upcoming videos.